All right, so you're like, wow, I can't believe we had that entire discussion over a single mark. Well, it's because uh, there was a lot hiding within it. So that was, believe it or not, question one. Uh, let's go a little further and see what was the next question I picked out. Okay, it's all the way into extended response. Let's have a look at question 11. It says, part A, uh, sketch the region of the Argan plane in which Z plus two, um, Z bar plus two is less than four showing all relevant detail. Okay, so what do we do with this question? Well, I really like this question because um, it, it pulls out, let's get a new page over here. Um, it pulls out, uh, or rather it combines our understanding of complex numbers as algebraic objects and simultaneously as geometric objects, right? It's like, hey, we're gonna ask you to do some algebraic manipulation on this, um, but what you're gonna get out of this is an interpretation of that algebraic result that's a picture on the Argan diagram, okay? So we'll start just by stating uh, the particular inequality that they want us to graph, um, what subset of the complex plane will satisfy this particular inequality. Now, uh, because what I want to get towards is this sort of uh, a Cartesian representation, right? Eventually, I'm going to head towards um, some kind of inequality which has x's and y's, right? So um, I will make some substitution of like let z equal x plus i y, and then the general x and general y will exist on, this, on the um, Argan diagram. However, before I do that, I want to see if there's any kind of manipulation I can do in the Z's, right, in the complex form before I split everything out into real and imaginary that might make things simpler for me, especially because I notice these conjugates, right? And conjugates are there because they have very useful properties in how they cancel out with each other, okay? So let's have a go. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to expand what I, what I have here and see what emerges. So I'm going to have just doing, you know, first outside, inside, last, uh, Z, Z bar. I'm gonna get two lots of Z, I'm gonna get two lots of Z bar, and then uh, two times two gives me four, uh, and then I'll move that over a little bit so that I can have my less than four over on the right hand side. Okay, now this is really great because the particular um, expansion or algebraic terms, the um, this polynomial, right, sort of thing that you're gonna get here, the binomials that are going to be combined here, they pair up the conjugates very nicely that are gonna give me results that maybe you instantly recognize, right? Um, Z, Z bar, I know what that is, um, but I'll just write that out the front momentarily. Um, and double of Z plus Z bar, um, I also know what that is because the whole idea of the conjugate is that the imaginary parts are positive and negative. If you add them, they cancel, okay? Um, while I'm at it, I notice there's a four on both sides, so I'm just gonna subtract that from both sides, okay? So at this point, I think it's appropriate to now say, okay, I've done enough simplifying, I've noticed that the combination of Z and Z bar, Z and its conjugate will allow me to simplify some things here, but just to make it really clear for us, let me just um, put this bit of working here um, to make the substitution really clear, right? Um, for starters, if, oopsie daisy, if Z equals X plus I, Y, this is the substitution I was mentioning, then for instance, Z plus Z bar, um, we just said the imaginary parts will cancel, so that will just leave you with double the real part. So I'm just gonna get two X, right? Um, and while I'm at it, Z times Z bar, maybe you don't this, get this one like straight away, um, that multiplication is going to be X plus I, Y, X minus I, Y, right? This is kind of a difference of squares situation, except the fact that I've got these I's hanging out there, so they're gonna make my difference of squares into a sum of squares because the I squared will become negative one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flag these two objects here uh, and I'm going to substitute them into, let's just name this, let's call this inequality one, uh, and I'm gonna substitute these two results in terms of X's and Y's into inequality one. All right, here we go. So the ZZ bars hanging, hanging out the front, so I'll write that as X squared plus Y squared. I'll just put the colors in to make it really clear for you. And then I'm doubling, what am I doubling? And the answer is 2X. That's what I get when I add my complex number with its conjugate. Um, and that, let's just make that bracket neater, is less than zero, okay. Now, I can see at this point, I've got the x squared, and this is a 4x, and uh, you know you can clearly see with the x squared and the y squared, um, being that they're added together, this is gonna be a circle, right? Or some subset of circles, because I've got an inequality. So where my brain is going is, I'm gonna need to complete the square. If I've got x squared plus 4x here, then I'm gonna halve and square this coefficient. And thankfully, this has already been halved for me. Look, it's two times two. It's almost like a question was designed to make this easy. So therefore, I'm gonna have the x squared, um, plus the 4x, um, to complete the square I will add, halve that square, it gives me four. Um, funnily enough, I subtracted that before, so I might as well add it back to both sides. Uh, and then you just got that y squared hanging out there. 
So far so good, I'll just factorize it to make it a little more geometrically obvious what shape I'm dealing with. Okay, so the boundary of this um, Argan diagram, this subset of the complex plane is gonna be the circle, um, x plus two all squared plus y squared equals four. That's how you get the boundary line of um, a subset of the complex plane. And then because I see this less than, I want all of the circles that have that radius of four, but smaller, right? I'm not including actually four because um, the boundary is not included, okay? All right, so let's draw this thing up. Uh, I'm going to take some, um, some nice big fat lines here. So I think, by the way, um, I'm gonna get a radius of two and I'm shifted horizontally two units to the left. So therefore, um, I'm not even gonna bother really drawing the positive side. Um, let's draw this. So here comes the imaginary axis. I'll put some, um, put something on, some arrows on that shortly. Here's one, here's three, four. So this is imaginary. This is real, and I'll admit I am gonna cheat slightly <laughs> in this next section because I'm gonna draw a perfect circle here. Ta-da! Um, but you know what I would suggest is if you don't carry a pair of compasses around with you into exams, um, the thing that I always used to do was I would carry a roll of tape um, into my exam, uh, not to stick anything together, um, but it allowed me to just place it down on the um, on the page and just draw a really quick circle. Um, it did mean all of my circles were the same size, but you know what, it worked for me. Um, so it was quick and dirty and it worked, okay? So there you go, there's our boundary, right? And I might as well just uh, mark that in. That's uh, x plus two all squared plus y squared is equal to four. There's our boundary. I've dotted it to indicate that it's actually not included in my inequality. Um, I go all the way over to negative four because from the center, which we said was negative two, I've got that radius of two and I touch at the origin. Um, that means how far am I going up? Answer, um, that's 2i up there and negative 2i down here. Uh, and then what else do I need? Well, I actually need to shade that subset, that inside part, because all of those smaller circles, right? So again, sorry, teeny bit of cheating here, but there you go. Let's see, let's pop that in there and uh, get this looking about right. So get the color right. Phil's already been chosen. And now let's make this the appropriate size. Ta -da. Okay, there you go. And of course you just grab your pencil and shade like so, but hopefully this is nice and clear for you, okay? Now in terms of what we were looking for when we were marking this, um, I think if you look, go back to the paper, um, there were three marks on this. There you go, part A, three marks over there on the right-hand side. Uh, I'm looking for things like, number one, did you get the boundary right? Like, Was it a circle and is that circle in the correct place? Um, things like these, um, these sort of boundary values here are really important to, to mark in. You, you've absolutely got to put the center of the circle on there, um, it's kind of a, an essential, a non-negotiable. Did you get that it was dotted? That was also important. And then the shape of it had to be reasonably accurate and the fact that it was shaded on the inside and not the outside. So these were all of the features that we were looking for.